<laughs> I saw some of your comments about the computer. I don't think that many of you realize what it was like to have a computer in 1998 and 1999. I'm gonna give you the landscape. In the thumbnail is that computer, which cost almost $4,000. It, it was the top of the line, fastest computer, and my, my iPhone has more power than that computer. Way more power. But I want you to think, I want you to really, really think and go back. When did you have your first email address? My first email address was onyxpros at yahoo.com. You can go ahead and hit it because I deleted it because one of the things that I found out that happened with your first email address is if they became spam traps that you, you would go in there and there'll be nothing in there but spam. So I got rid of that. I got rid of that. My second um, email address was uh, GC solutions at hotmail.com. Now it's my second email address, but I want you to really, really think, cause you know, right now, many of you are like 30 something and you literally grew up with computers. You grew up with email addresses. I was at that stage where we entered into the computer age. I remember when most people did not have cell phones. A lot of people had pagers. It was a different era. And also, and there's a reason I'm giving you all of the buildup. There's also a reason because having a computer was highly associated with income level. I used to be a member of a book club and there was a few people in there who had some really good jobs. They were VPs, um, CEOs, and this one girl, she actually had a computer in her house and her company installed an ISDN line, which is kind of like DSL. And then there is the AOL dial up. You know, this high speed internet was not a thing. Everyone, I mean, for a long time, I remember I was living in Clayton County. I was the first person to get a DSL line. So I'm, I'm just giving you this build up because typically when you were online back then, you had a little bread, you had a little, little cachet in life. And let me introduce you to the crazy black planet era. If you didn't know, Black Planet was like a social network before Facebook. I even think it was before MySpace. I'm not sure, I have to look at that. But when I was on Black Planet, I was member 50,232. When I was on Black Planet, there was only 50,000 members. I want you to think about, you know, at that time, it was like, wow, we got 50,000. 50,000, you, you got YouTube, you got multiple YouTube channels with more members and subscribers than that. And getting on Black Planet, and the Black Planet era is how I got into the house at East Point. I met the chick who owned that house on Black Planet. And also, you know, I had some fun in the West End, but not like the fun that I had in the East Point house. Nothing even compares, cause see, in the East Point, I was getting my bread together. You know, I was getting my life together. And I remember I was messing around in my room on the Saturday morning, and I met this chick who lived in Augusta. That's her in the thumbnail. And it was a different conversation because if you met someone online and you were talking, you had an email address, there were certain considerations assumed. And she did not know I was living in a boarding house. She, she had no clue what I, my situation was. And I was just sitting there talking, talking all the smack. You know, on the internet, no one knows that you're a dog, right? So we go ahead and we start talking, start talking. And she's like, why don't you come see me? So at this point, I rent a car. I, I remember. I'm a scrub, TLC, you know, trying to 
holla at you from the side, passenger side of my best friend, friend's ride. That was me, I was scrubby scrub. So I rented the car, went down there and spent the weekend. And this became, this because this was ground zero. Because I didn't understand how easy it was to meet women online back then. Because, you know, I got stories of love, AOL, I've got all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I went down there, did what I did, came back to my room, turned the rental car in at the airport. And I began to understand what a gold mine, like, you know, how I got the computer was wrong. It was wrong, but I am so glad I did that. That computer was the avenue, was the gateway, was the facilitator of many of the things. I mean, it was such a powerful tool. It got me money got me sex, it got me recognition. I was able to participate in all of these online groups and everything, but Black Planet, which I don't think exists anymore, was a breeding ground for illicit and crazy activity. Because like I said, I met her, then I met another girl in Decatur, and it was just easy. It was so easy. Just a little chit chat, a little. And I think the computer age has always made it easier for us to do what we needed to do because the conversations were deeper. We, we you know, it, it, it was more involved. There was more effort put forth back then. But Black Planet dot com google it because like i said i don't think it exists anymore um was just such a hotbed of activity for me because when i was in the east point boarding house is when i got the job with Renacrate. and then a week after I got the job with Renacrate, I met Diane who owned the East Point house and we developed a little friendship. It was never sexual or nothing like that. We were just buddies. We used to go out and eat together and stuff like that. And then she's like, hey, why don't you move into my house? I was like, okay. It, 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 it was like, I didn't even have a written lease. It was just a verbal agreement. And so I had that computer at Black Planet, which got me the computer, facilitated me getting the job at Renacrate. And Black Planet facilitated me renting the East Point house, which in the East Point house was the come up situation. That's where I had the job at Renegrate. Uh, I had the job at Panel Systems and I had the job at Business Environments. The East Point house was the come up house. And it was very, very different back then. It was such a different feel because at this point, we we're starting to move into the 2000s. But I want you to really think back 21, 22, 23 years ago at what the internet looked like now. The websites weren't even the same. It was such a different era. Cause you know, like I said, some of you would be like, well, you know, unfortunately you get a computer for 300 bucks. You couldn't have got the computer for 300 bucks back then. If you were going to spend minimum 15, 1600, you weren't getting the computer and the cell phones. I remember, I remember when I got my first cell phone, which was with Bell South, which is now AT&T. And it was like 600 minutes and free nights and weekends. Like you guys don't understand how different it was back then. Cause like, there's like the whole comment, like, 
Cause see now, yeah, you can get a computer for three hundred bucks. Yeah, you can get a you can get an amazing cell phone for under a hundred bucks. And that didn't exist back then. That didn't exist. You were not getting a computer without spending fifteen hundred bucks. Then you had to get the AOL, or you had to get MindSpring. Remember MindSpring, an Atlanta internet service provider. It was. Uh, Yahoo, I believe Yahoo had their internet. There, there was there was like all of these, it was like the wild, wild west. It was so crazy. It was uh, so wide open because to understand, for me, because that computer adjusted for money today was like a $10,000 computer. And as I had it, because as I moved in the East Point house, I remember it uh, starting, you know, because at this point, I got the computer in 98, 99, 2000, 2000. About 2002 is when it started to really, no, nah, actually it started to nut up before then because how many of you remember having to defrag your computer? Because it would get so slow, because at one point you have it, it would get slower and slower and slower, and then you have to go in, defrag it, clean up all your files and stuff. I am telling you, it was such a different era back then. The beginning of the computer age, the beginning of the home computer, the beginning of, because you know, the computers went to the workplace first, and then people started to buy. How many of you remember, what was the, what was the name of the store? It doesn't even exist anymore. I don't even remember the name of the store, but they used to sell computers. And then there was Gateway Computer, there was Dell Computer, IBM, then the Microsoft Software. I did not get into Apple products because I was IBM compatible from that 1998 until 2010. So I was using, you know, and this this is one of the things when I was in the storage auction business, I used to upgrade my computer every year because I was so hard on them and I would just replace them and then sell a used computer on eBay. And then when I got to the Mac life, I've not gone back to, I, I just can't go back. I can't go back because I got my first Mac, which was like one of those guys, it was except it was a 21 incher. Um, 2010 ish, I believe. And then I upgraded to the 21 inch 2011. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff in 2011. And I got a 21 inch and I got the 17 inch MacBook Pro, which they no longer make. They make a 16 incher now. They don't make a 17 incher. And this, that stuff lasted me until I got those computers, which I got, I think 2016, 2017. I'm not sure. Cause I, those are tricked out. Those have extra RAM. Those are, um, cause you know, the process video. So I've got those two and upstairs. I have a MacBook. Pro that I pretty much just use for live streaming up there. That's the only reason I use it because I do all the heavy lifting stuff down here. But yeah, it's going to be time for an upgrade on these pretty much probably after the Rona because I'm, you know, I don't know. Probably in another year or two, I'm going to upgrade everything I have um, and, and resell those. But I'm here to tell you, having that computer changed my life. It really, really did. And I don't regret how I got it. I don't regret it at all because if I didn't get it, I don't think that I would be doing what I'm doing because what I was doing back then and I didn't understand that was I was building computer development, computer communication skills. I didn't understand what I was doing. I was just on the computer, just on the computer. 
want you to understand, it was such a different era back then that I can now look back at it and be amazed and be, my mind is blown based on how far we've come because we went from an era where no one had computers in their houses to everyone got computers to now we're back to an era where there's a lot of people who don't even have a computer. They do everything on their phone or their tablet. They do not even have a computer. So, you know, unless you're like me, a YouTuber or something like that, you, you really don't even have a computer. You don't even have a need for a computer because you can could, you could do everything on your phone or you can do it on a tablet. Oh yeah, I got a tablet, which I bought 2017. And, you know, I just play games on it and I do a little surfing because, you know, once again, you know, I could, there's a keyboard around here somewhere for that tablet. I don't even know where it is. But yeah, you know, for you folks who's like, that was a that was a perk to know someone with a computer. That was a perk back then. It was a perk. It wasn't like it is now. And I think this is one of the things that we take for granted because Louis C.K. had this uh, skit. Everything is wonderful, but people are pissed off because he, he said, for, I mean, I want you to imagine for you to go to the airport and get on a plane and the airplane takes off, takes you to a different location. You have to imagine the massive level of technology and uh, innovation that goes into it. And people treat it as it, it, ain't, it ain't no big deal. It ain't nothing special. That's kind of how you folks are like acting with like, well, good, thank God you can get a computer for 300 bucks. Not back then you could not. You couldn't get the access. You couldn't get the access, baby. And I was the man with the access. And this is one of the first things I learned about having resources, how resources can make your day and literally change your worldview, change everything that you do, literally open up new doors and set the stage for growth, economic development and come up. But yeah, that was wild because, you know, since I told y'all the white collar story, you know, I can now start talking about these stories in these situations because there's a lot of stuff that happened before I got into the storage auction business. Because like I said, that, that, that job in business environments, that six figure job, saving that money, doing that deal for um, FJDA, life changing, life changing. The East Point house was the transition house from my old life to my new life. That was the transition. All right, so if you want to get into transition, I want you to go below and get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. And I want you to go below and get 30 days to 2,500. These will be transformational courses. If you take the course and actually go through it and do the work you can make money you can get a new mindset and if you need help with your business i have a multitude of consulting packages below to help you out and be sure to check out my new channel if you're interested in doing youtube or you want to know about the life of a youtuber because that's what that whole channel is about it's about my life as a youtuber and stuff that youtubers go through that really it's amazing, but you know, cause everyone talks about how much money YouTubers make and stuff, but no one talks about being quote, a YouTuber and how that changes your life. So that links below as well. So with that, I'll see y'all in the next video and be sure to watch this next video.